Hey everybody! Welcome back to Northern Land. Please abide in your guys for the plus. 19 is just another number en route to infinity, dude. FY8K. BJB8. Stats? Very good. Except for the obvious lack of HP. If it weren't for the HP, you know, dearth we have going on here, I'd have basically nothing to complain about. So I'm pretty stoked that we actually do have something to complain about. Per throw on a floor like this is lovely as well. Um, potato peeler is a really cool starting item. You know, sometimes, we oftentimes, I should say, see potato peeler or items like it in the shop where we go, and eh, there's a use for it, but, you know, it's not useful to us immediately. I already have something that's better or, like, more universally applicable. You know, you get the idea. But to start with an item like this means we can, in some way, kind of tailor our run uh, around a potato peeler synergy, you know, which is a renewable damage upgrade. This is a really tough choice for me. Um... I think you have to take Mom's Wig. Mom's Wig is too good to pass up. Especially with no rerolls except per throw. What do you do with per throw? Well, you probably, in my opinion, try to use it on the first floor boss. I.e. this guy. Um, but if we get an HP upgrade, we'll probably just roll with it. Use it for a potential deal with the devil upgrade that could set us up for life. Don't get too attached to 0.8 damage up out of the potato peeler just yet. It's kind of, it's there for the, the DPS we don't want anything to do with yet. Or the, the HP we don't want anything to do with. Probably just take it, and you know what? I'm willing to take another stab at this. This is, uh, you know, we're talking Isaac. We're talking Isaac because it's a very tactical situation right now. It's very important. Ideally, for survival purposes, if we take a hit, who cares? For a deal with the devil purposes, it matters a great deal. Certainly just take the halo, and then these are not very good. Throw in a reroll, all of a sudden they become fantastic. So just to get Rotten Baby out of that is a dream come true. <laughs> okay, all of a sudden, this run's looking in a really, really good spot early on. Not just because of the halo, that does help though. You know, were it not for the Halo, I, I probably would have uh, per-throwed the boss item. Never would have gotten the chance to pick up uh, Rotten Baby instead. And Rotten Baby is like, honestly, push comes to shove, Rotten Baby is probably one of my favorite items in the game. It's, it's cute. It's extremely good. It's a one-heart deal with the devil cost. What's wrong with that, dude? How, who says no? I do sometimes if I don't have the HP, but I'm feeling like we're locked in right now. Not for a win in this episode necessarily, although yes, probably. Um, I, I just mean in general, like I feel like uh, we're in a, a really, really good spot in Isaac. I think I've been playing adequately. Please, I really want the nickel. Um, we've been playing adequately, um, and sometimes that's all you need, you know? Doesn't get the Monday morning quarterbacks filed up. Hey, look at this adequate play, but I'm willing to use it once there. It's not 0.8 damage up, it's 0.2. It's my bad. Uh, I want to keep one heart, because one heart allows us to get one heart or two heart deals with the devil, and we should have a 66% chance. We do in the 67. What's the difference, you know? I mean, there is there's an obvious smart answer to that, but what's the difference functionally, you know? Not very much. Unless, I mean, if you if you work for NASA, or really any kind of engineering firm, yeah, that 1.5% might be a little bit more critical, you know? But when you're 1.5%, uh, yeah. Sorry, I, was, <laughs> I got lost in my own head there temporarily. Um, might be a little bit more critical. <sighs> but you know, in Isaac, it's like tipping. You know, maybe you gave 14%, maybe you gave 17%, who cares? You know, you you were looking in the roughly the right area. You know, it, all these people using tip calculators and stuff like that. First off, the machine does it for you now, okay? But also, is the easiest thing in the world. 10%, move the decimal place on the bill. One point to the left. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff here, don't get me wrong. 15%, add half 
after moving the decimal point. 20% double what you have after you have the decimal point. If you start leaving 17.5% tips or 12.5% tips, you know, you can do the math for yourself, but you're kind of getting yourself into that. You know, you only need a calculator once you make it too complicated. Imagine it's also not that complicated to tip zero, but so be it. I had an awkward moment yesterday, okay? It's not that awkward necessarily, but it was kind of... I don't know if anybody else gets this, but it got like my my inner like caveman flowing a little bit. So Kate and I were going to a, a Japanese barbecue restaurant, which is like Korean barbecue. But the major difference is it's Japanese. And in order to get there, you know, I had to pull a legal U-turn. I don't like pulling a U-turn at the best of times, but sometimes you got to do it. I waited till I had a protected uh, green light with the arrow and everything. I took a, uh, I took the U-turn. The meantime, a car like speeding in the lane that had a red light. You can turn right on red in Canada. I'm just setting the stage. They turn left. And uh, we didn't even come close to even whispering a collision at one another. But, you know, I was in front of them and they gave me like a little honk. Like, hey, I wanted to be there. And I gave them a little look in the mirror like, yeah, I bet you did. Immediately after that, I turned in the, you know, barbecue restaurant parking lot. Guess who turns in after me? That's right. The man who so ungraciously honked at me. Uh, you know, t we park, they may get into the restaurant a little bit faster than us, but they're freaking out. They're like, table for eight, and they're like, we can't really accommodate a table for eight, it might be like 40 minutes. And they're like, okay, we'll think about it. I walk up, mm, table for two, they're like, right this way, sir. And I gave, I know it's petty, but I just gave him like a little, huh, when I walked by. I gave him a little shrug and like a, what are you gonna do, you know? I'm not saying it's karma. It's more just like dynamics. You know, they have eight people. It's hard to get a table at a restaurant. I mean, what do you do? Make a reservation. Are you insane? Eight people? You're just going to saunter up to a, a busy restaurant? Eh, we're trying to seat me and my six kids. Look, they got an app, okay? Just make a reservation. But it, I got to tell you, it felt great. Were they in the wrong to honk at me? Yes. There's, I'm not tolerating uh, too much dissent on this. I was making an illegal U-turn on a protected left turn light. They were turning right on a red light, which is legal, but it requires you to make sure that the way is safe from traffic that has the right of way. I had the right of way, okay? I inconvenienced them ever so slightly, but I didn't because I didn't invent the concept of a red light. And I'm not saying you reap what you sow, but I'm saying in this case, they sowed a bunch of garbage and they got some garbage in return. It felt awesome. Dude, I gotta tell you, I'll, I'll just tell you the name of the restaurant. It's not like it's one of a kind, nor is it like close to where we live. But uh, the restaurant is called uh, Gyukaku. It's a chain restaurant. I know it gets, you know, chain restaurants gets get a bad rap, but here's the thing. I've been to a lot of Japanese, Korean barbecue restaurants in my life. Yeah, I'll spend a bomb on this. I will take, here's a dirty little secret, okay? Gordon Ramsay's not in the back of the Japanese barbecue restaurant being like, You forgot the tare! You know, it's just meat. It's meat and marinade. It, you know, it, the character of the restaurant does not change that much from a chain restaurant to a, you know, a family-owned Korean barbecue place. We used to go to a family-owned Korean barbecue place in Vancouver, and it wasn't as good. I hate to say it. I, you know, we support a lot of local businesses. Service was routinely bad. Forgetting parts of the order. Never checking on us, waiting forever to take the bill. Gyukaku, they have like 800 locations on Earth. I feel like a corporate shill eating there. But at the end of the day, they come around quickly. They go, what do you want? They bring you what you wanted. It's delicious because it's just good meat. You grill it yourself. And then they're like, you know, do you want anything else? And you're like, hey, the bill, please. Moreover, and I'm not, Gyukaku has no idea that I exist, okay? As, a, as an entity, as a human being, sometimes. When we sat down last night, the guy was like, I've served you before. And I was like, ah, we can never come here again. But um, they they have the best loyalty app. It is it's pricey for a chain restaurant, I'll admit. You know, you might spend 30 bucks each if you go for a dinner for two. You're going to leave full, though. And that's 30 Canadian, I'll admit. But 
Um, it depends what you get, too. If you're getting... I mean, you could spend easily 150 each if you're getting... I'll take the Wagyu Kobe sampler plate, please. It's not really where I choose to live my life, but more power to you. Um, but they have the best loyalty rewards program I've ever seen. Except maybe I, I hear on Red at Red Robin, if you say it's your birthday, they just give you a free burger, which is absurd. But... Um, after you collect points by buying things, you know, at the restaurant, you, they have like an app loyalty program. Um, we've eaten there three or four times, and uh, uh, maybe five times now that I think about it. And last time, you know what we got? Like last night? $25 off! That's insane! <laughs> I was like, is this... I showed the phone to the server, and I was like, is this legit? And like, it was the most mundane thing in the world. He's like, yeah, dude, 25 bucks off. I mean, he said sir, but I wish he called me dude. We're on the level. I'm hip. I'm with it. Anyway. I'm just saying, if you got a Gyukaku around you, I would... I'm not against it. You know, it's, uh, I was talking about it with Kate last night, you know? There's no substitute for a one-of-a-kind one restaurant, local, uh, you know, locally sourced ingredients, run by a passionate chef, charging you way too much money, but at least it's a one-of-a-kind experience, right? Like that, it, for special occasions especially, that's like, that's a chef's kiss. That's the ideal. But when it comes to food that's like, you know, the, the actual craftsmanship quality of it is not that important. I admire the Ray Kroc-esque, uh, profit-focused model of a chain restaurant. I, I All I can say is that in the past couple of weeks, I had a few bad experiences at locally owned restaurants where I went, you know what? Like, I, after we went to that Korean fried chicken restaurant, I was like, I would rather be at KFC right now. <laughs> I would, at least, like, at KFC, I feel like if I have a bad experience and I tweeted them, they would be like, we're so sorry that happened, and, you know, I'm not saying there would be repercussions, but somebody up there is like, hey, this location's costing me money. At, at these locally owned places, I feel like, I, you know, if you don't like the food, you can call 1-800-KISS-MY-YOU-KNOW-WHAT. Which is why, for my birthday every year, I like to go to Dairy Queen. <laughs> not true, those basically don't exist here anymore. There's a couple, but they're always haunted. I grew up liking Dairy Queen a lot, and I, s I have fond memories of blizzards and the chicken strip basket with the delicious gravy. Still good. Also, one of the worst meals you can get at a fast food restaurant from a caloric standpoint. I don't know what they do. They, like, deep fry the chicken strips, like, 12 times. But it's delicious. I can't deny that. It's fantastic. If you put those in front of me right now, I would chow down. Absolutely. Self-control would be out the window. But, uh, for whatever reason, in B.C., I don't know if it's true in the rest of Canada or North America, but yo, know, when I was a kid, there were like ads for Dairy Queen on TV. It was like hot eats and cool treats. It was always like neon signs, and you're like, dude, Dairy Queen, it owns. Now every Dairy Queen, even if it's the middle of the day when I walk by it here, it's like I hear the cry of a coyote. They're like, Woo! And I'm like, it's 2.30 p.m. Where's that coyote coming from? Oh, it's the combination Dairy Queen and Orange Julius across the street. That's what it is. Like, I always think if I go into that Dairy Queen, they're going to try to sell me something that Dairy Queen has never sold. They're going to be like, try our submarine sandwich. I'm going to be like, what? I just wanted a dilly bar. That's not true. I always get the mint Oreo blizzard. And by always, I mean... Once a month when I was 12 years old. I don't You know what another haunted place in uh, Vancouver is? Ontario and, and also Quebec, I guess, via St. Hubert. Um, cover your ears. People in British Columbia, at least in Vancouver, hate the restaurant known as Swiss Chalet. If you don't know what Swiss Chalet is, if you're American, it's like a Boston market. If you're, uh, if you live elsewhere in the world, uh, it's, it's, they sell predominantly like back ribs, like pork ribs and rotisserie chicken. That's their thing is like, uh, it's a rotisserie chicken in a special sauce that a lot of think people think tastes like soap, but I think tastes delicious because I grew up in Ontario um, and thus got exposed to it a lot at an early age. But uh, 
it's it's well liked in Ontario, at least to some extent. You can talk to people who otherwise have good palates, and they'll tell you, oh, Swiss Chalet. Like, ask Malf. Malf will tell you. What's, what's weird? Swiss Chalet has, like, great poutine. It's strange, but it's it's true. Um, and a lot, like, when, uh, like, it's my grandma's birthday, we're like, Grandma, where do you want to go for dinner? 100% of the time, Swiss Chalet. And we got to make reservations, like, four or five weeks in advance. We got to be like, hey, table for four? And they're like, it's, are you crazy, mister? This is the hottest ticket in town. You know, it's a chain rotisserie chicken restaurant, but it's extremely popular. Even I like it, I'll admit. If I was back in Ontario, my parents were like, hey, you want to go to Swiss Chalet tonight? I'd be like, of course, absolutely. Um, all right. We're at 13 minutes on the womb, by the way. That's how you know a run's going pretty solidly. Lusty Blood, thank you so much for that, by the way. Um, but in BC, people hate it. We used to live, uh, not close to, but like, you know, a couple of buses away from the last Swiss Chalet location in Vancouver. And every time, like, I think of it as a nice, like, family restaurant that's fast casual. Every time I walked by it in BC or drove by it, um, there's always, like, one dude sitting by himself at a table drinking a, the tallest glass of Rickard's Red I've ever seen in my entire life. I, don't, I always just imagine that it's just it's someone that's here from Ontario and they're like, I know that place. They're, they don't sell raw fish. I can even get a Rickard's Red here, you know? Oh, finally, all this exotic food from the other part of the country I live in. Oh. I like Swiss Chalet, for the record. But, uh, it's true. It's is weird to say, but it's not popular at all in BC. Like, it's out of business level. But there's stuff in BC that's is more popular than it should be, in my opinion. Like, uh, there are... I mean, maybe this is popular all across... This is a very Canadian episode right now. Americans, get out. Or learn something from this, okay? Um, people in BC seem... Just by virtue of the number of locations and advertising presence... Seem to love Boston Pizza. Boston Pizza is a it's a Canadian pizza chain. Um, to Americanize it, I actually don't know what pizza chain it would be closest to. You know, they're they're not like a Papa John's where they're like you know our our thing is uh, the butter sauce and the you know better ingredients, better pizza. I guess they're they're kind of like a Pizza Hut in that they sell a lot of. Um, like, they do like a, you know, you can get a pepperoni, you can get a buffalo chicken pizza, but you can get like a, a spicy pierogi pizza, you know? Um, and it, it's kind of been like branded as a place where like, you know, after your beer league hockey game, you and your boys go out to Boston Pizza, have a couple brewskis, maybe a couple more, don't tell the missus, and uh, you know, you're, you're good. It's not, I, I'm not a big fan of Boston Pizza. I don't really like it. I don't, I don't like it for the pizza, and I don't like it at all for the atmosphere, but I'll admit, if somebody else was buying and the location was okay, I'd be like, sure, I'll go to Boston Pizza with you. But uh, it is also one of those places that's like, oh, yeah, a pizza? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, $22. Oh, we'll definitely take this. I'm actually, I'm starting to get a little nervous about our HP, but I think the Book of Rev is going to keep us going strong there. But they are, and I think it's partly because the owner, or the founder, Jim Treliving, who you may recognize from Canadian Dragon's Den, um, he, he's BC local. He also invented another hilariously named uh, Canadian chain called Mr. Lube <laughs> that does oil changes. But uh, you would think that it's like one of the most popular restaurants in BC. I don't know. Is The Boston Pizza's... There's like the holy trinity of, of Vancouver, like, I don't want to call them malls. What am I looking for? You know, like a a mall, but all the stores are like separate buildings outside. You guys have the, yeah, of course you have them. They're not strip malls. Because um, a strip mall is like, hey, it's like one building and then, hey, uh, tax prep, laundromat, dry cleaner, uh, liquor store. Chinese restaurant that also sells sushi, you know, like I know what a strip mall is This is more like it's one huge parking lot, and then there's like Best Buy uh, Home Depot 
I'm trying to think of the stores that are that are in these places. Best Buy, Home Depot, um, Winners, which is like our TJ Maxx or something like that. Uh, Old Navy. Now I'm just naming the ones from my town. Denny's, GameStop. A Starbucks, probably like the first Starbucks your city ever got was in one of these. And it's just, it's a big like square perimeter. And then in the middle is a big parking lot. So you park in the ocean of parking and then you walk to your island of retail choice. That's in, in every single one of those in BC, there's like White Spot, Cactus Club Cafe, Earl's, and I guarantee 1,000% there's a dang old Boston pizza in there. You know what there's not? Swiss Chalet. I also, I'm just realizing now, I ain't never seen a Red Lobster in British Columbia in my life. This might be sacrilegious. Um, you might be like, well, you live in Vancouver, you probably have better seafood. The ocean's right there. Probably, yes, and I, I love all kinds of seafood. I, I got a great joke that I invented. I'm on a seafood diet. I seafood, I eat it. Ha ha ha. Top right, by the way. Um, but as much as I love a scallop, clam, mussel, uh, crab, lobster, pretty much every kind of fish you can imagine, um, there's just something about going to a red lobster and being like, hey, could you fry up like a bunch of shells you found at the bottom of the ocean? Like, just batter them deep fry them and send them over to table six. I could get that. You know, I'm cognizant of the fact that that I'm a one of a kind. I'm like a unicorn when it comes to this. Not that I'm the only person in the world, but I'm like the last of my line when it comes to this. Because, you know, if we continue to live in Vancouver, there is no question that if we have a child, that child is going to grow up to be a snob. There's, And I'm a snob too. But I'm a snob who also lived in the country, lived in the suburbs, and I'm like, you know, I, I can get down with a good beef Wellington, but there's no substitute for a, you know, a $3 boiled hamburger from the high school cafeteria. I know that it's gonna die with me, you know? My, my kid's gonna end up being like... I gotta work against this, I guess. Otherwise, they're gonna end up going to college when they're 18, and they're gonna be like, you don't have kale? The Caesar salad uses hearts of romaine. It doesn't use... Can I substitute the hearts of romaine with kale? I'm gonna be like, yo. Yo, Dylan. Cool it, dude. You're gonna get in trouble. How am I supposed to get my vitamin K, teacher? Dylan. Relax, dude. I don't know where I'm going. It's a weird bit. Anyway, we talked a lot about chain restaurants on today's episode, i.e. it's my favorite episode ever. I'm just saying, dude. I got nothing against a chain restaurant. They... I, they tend to... Am I gonna say? I'm gonna say... They tend to be run better. I'm sorry. At least here. You know, I, I'm not talking about a Burger King, because a Burger King is also one of those restaurants, at least in Canada, where when you walk by it, it you know, you hear an owl go, whoo, and you're like, what? It's breakfast. I'm talking about like uh, maybe Red Robin is a great example. Like when I went, if I went to the Red Robin on Robson Street, i.e. Red Robson, and that is where it is. You can look it up. I wouldn't necessarily expect uh, to have the greatest meal of my life, but I would expect to be served reasonably quickly. And that's sort of something. I mean, I'll tell you, you know. I, I'm a fan of In-N-Out. When I'm in California, I get the chance I like to go to In-N-Out. Or really any place that has In-N-Out. You know, if, if I get the opportunity, I'd like to go. Um, I don't want to get into burger power rankings. But we don't have In-N-Out in Canada. There was a knockoff called Cali Burger that was actually real close to that dang old Red Robson. And uh, I went there once. And I was like, it's a knockoff of the In-N-Out business model. It's got to be, like, pretty on the level, right? So I was like, yeah, I'll have, like, the Cali burger and, uh, you know, also, I think I got a beer. And then I, like, sat down with the number so she could deliver it to the table. And she came over and she had, like, a milkshake. And she was like, sorry, we're out of beer, so I just made you a milkshake instead. And I was like, you know what? Here's the thing. I drank that milkshake. It was okay. But I was more like, this is the sort of thing that it doesn't happen 
at in and out <laughs> I mean, in and out doesn't serve alcohol to begin with, I think. But I don't know if that would ever be like, you know, you go to the in and out And you'd be like, I'll take a, you know, I'll take a two-by-two with animal style fries and then they come over with like a chocolate birthday cake and they're like sorry we're out of fries so we just gave you something that's completely different that you didn't ask for instead that place is now um, it's moved the food was pretty good I will say but it's just you get you get into a little weirdness all that weirdness gets ironed out by shareholders I think if it's a if it's a chain restaurant whose parent company exists on, like, the New York Stock Exchange. And I gotta say, I'm kind of for it. <laughs> if it could stop me from getting sick at the Korean fried chicken place, then that would be, uh... You know, it's a small price to pay, in my opinion. I can't believe on this whole run, we used Potato Peeler one time. We've had it since... I also can't believe we're gonna beat the game in 23 minutes. Like, I, I guess I shouldn't complain, but... Even, like, it's wild because our stats don't really look that impressive, but, you know, whatever gets the job done, gets the job done. Anyway, for now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. See ya!